Stanford and Storage. Uh, Kevin LeFew. Kevin is the leader for global business development at Storage Labs. He is currently focused on growing the network's global ecosystem in Europe, China, and South Korea. And I believe you guys need some time to set up, correct? Yeah. Okay, so. great. I'll go ahead and take the mic while we get set up. So uh, instead of giving a presentation today, what we're going to do is we're going to walk you through step by step what storage is and how it works. So we're going to upload an, a video to the storage network and we're going to stream it, uh, which is going to be fun. So uh, who here has heard of storage or decentralized cloud object storage? Looks like there's a decent amount of people. We're uh, uh, pursuing the Korean market pretty heavily right now, and uh, to give you background on what we're doing, it, we are similar to Amazon S3, but decentralized, meaning we allow anybody to get compensated for the resources in terms of storage and bandwidth that they bring to the storage protocol. So we're essentially like Airbnb for disk drives. If you have extra hard drive space, you can get monetized for that resource. Uh, and so the way that storage works is rather than using a blockchain, the network's coordination avoidance, it doesn't come to one global state. We don't think a global state is decentralized. Um, and so when you upload data to the storage network, data gets encrypted client side so that only the user has the key to the data. It then gets broken up in a bunch of redundant pieces or shredded. And those pieces are stored across statistically uncorrelated nodes across a distributed network. Uh, and so what we're doing here is we're gonna create an account and log in to Tardigrade uh, and stream a video from nodes in the US. We also have an Asian uh, satellite. And if anyone here is a developer uh, and they want to get an early invite to the storage network, just send me an email afterwards and be happy to get you an invite link. We're giving away 25 free gigabytes of data to anyone who uh, chats with us after the conference and sends us an email. Uh, so essentially, right, you go, similar to any other cloud storage protocol, you go and you log in, you create an account, and you basically generate an API key. So we'll go ahead and do that. Um, I think what's cool about storage is we have like a real product and a real live network to demo. Uh, we're looking to compete with Amazon S3 at really co uh, three core value propositions. Uh, we're fully compatible with Amazon S3, which is their object storage layer, but we're half the price. We're also client-side encrypted, so we're more secure. Only you have the keys to your data. And for a number of use cases, we're more performant. Our network's really optimized for static object content, which is content that you write to once and read many times. So we're going to do here is we're going to generate an API key. An API key allows you to interface with the network programmatically. So we're going to go ahead and copy that and plug it into the CLI and upload a file. So let's see uh, what's kind of happening under the hood here. So, uh, yeah, so get some additional context as well. Uh, our guy Victor over here is one of our product managers based in Kiev, and so he helped build the, the graphic user interface that you see today. So let's go ahead here, uh, plug the API key into the uplink, and upload a file. Might be kind of tough to see due to the resolution. Um, we're uploading a 4K video, but I think we only have about, I don't know, 100,000 or so pixels on the stream, on the screen, so uh, might not be full quality. So let's go ahead and set this thing up. So, as we start to do this, really, I don't know if this is a group of developers, but this is the command line interface. One other interesting aspect of storage is that if you're an Amazon developer, you can reconfigure the Amazon AWS command line interface to talk with storage. So we want to make it as easy as possible for developers who are using Amazon to shift over to storage, basically repointing their pipes from Amazon to storage and cutting their cloud storage bills in half. So what we're doing right now is we're making a bucket. The way that cloud object storage works, it's pretty simple. You create buckets, you put objects inside of buckets, you can stream the data from those objects and buckets, and you can delete them. Uh, so we try to abstract a lot of the complexity kind of that takes place with decentralized cloud storage and make it as easy as possible to use. So in the development world, this is called CRUD. Uh, CRUD storage, which means create, read, update, and delete. Pretty simple. 
So it's kind of tough to even see what's going on here. So actually what we're doing is we're uploading a file, we're uploading an MP4, um, and this is basically getting encrypted at the local computer, broken up into thousands of pieces, and those thousands of pieces are stored on different computers and private data centers across Korea, across the United States, across the world. Uh, so we think it's pretty powerful to have a decentralized network where there's not one single point of failure. There's not a data center or a company that can delete your data. As Fabric was talking about earlier, um, there's kind of a huge implicit risk of, say, putting all of our data uh, on the storage servers of one company. So we're taking that risk and we're fractalizing it. We're spreading it across hundreds of nodes. So it uh, looks like that file was uploaded. I think our next step here is generating a URL um, and we'll be able to stream it directly from the browser. So hopefully all, all works here. Uh, it's always a little bit of a risk to do a live demo, but when it works out, it's a lot of fun. Uh, so here, we, this is Minio. Minio is a way to browse uh, objects in a way that's kind of a friendly user interface. Uh, and so you can see here, our video is uploaded. Uh, this is kind of a logical grouping of buckets and objects. So we're gonna go ahead and generate a URL from the video here. And because we're using the satellite in the United States, it might take a second to buffer. Um, and uh, we'll go ahead and do that and stream it. Once we, we get it all going here. Again, live demos is, there, there's something called the, the demo gods that you always pray to before you do the demo, just to make sure yeah, that it works. But it looks like we're good to go this time. So again, this we think this is super cool. Um, everyone has seen a live video streaming, but this is actually being streamed from thousands of different computers and data centers across the world concurrently in parallel. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and see what kind of vi uh, video Victor uploaded for us today. Again, it's gonna take probably a second to upload because it's talking to the United States right now. So we didn't actually use the uh, Asian sound. Lift off of the Delta rocket carrying glass, a gamma ray telescope searching for unseen physics in the stars of the galaxy. And again, this is streaming live from thousands of different computers, none of which are owned by Amazon, or by Microsoft, or by Google. They're owned by everybody, by you, by me. Everybody can now be in the cloud. There we go. There we have it, people. A live video streamed off storage. Uh, we're really excited by what we built. Thank you. We are going to market and launching in September. We're still in invite only right now, so if anyone wants to get an invite with 25 free gigabytes of storage, send me an email. It's kevin at storage.io. Uh, and yeah, we're, we're really excited. Our team is probably one of the strongest in the blockchain industry. Our CEO, Ben Gala, was previously the CEO of a company called Docker, which is a Linux containerization company. The Docker community, in terms of developers, is probably the second uh, largest in the world by the Linux Foundation. Uh, as a company, we're working with open source partners like MongoDB, Kafka, MariaDB, Couchbase, and enabling open source companies and tech partners to monetize based off the amount of data they bring to this, the decentralized storage network. So I advise you to look it up online and learn a bit more. Um, but yeah, this is, this is storage. And uh, thank you for your time. All right, I just want to call Mary back up here because we finally have her video ready. And I'll give her the microphone to explain a little bit about what we're about to see while I hook this up. As the only female here, I will use some privileges. Okay, okay. So, yeah, sorry for the late video. <laughs> yeah, we will play another video, but not the rocket this time. Okay, so uh, the following video are the upcoming games on Mix Marvel. Actually, we will uh, launch 12 altogether before the end of this year, but uh, all this on the air video, they are already ready to, ready to play. Okay, cool, no problem. If you want, I can 
blah blah for a long time here. Okay, cool. Right, so first of some videos are all the, all the existing one like Happy Dragons. Oh, okay, okay, come on. We got a voice here, so. Turn up, what? Sorry. Room for if this is mobile land, so the assets can be reused and we visualize different buildings to functions so that you can enter different buildings. And Happy Dragon's Go, you can play on Untoken or Ontology already. So, yeah, it, it's uh, they have something in common with crypto kitties like you can raise and you can trade different dragons. And uh, it's most expensive dragon is like uh, 12,000 US dollars, as far as I can remember. And pepper snakes. So all the coins you are eating, they are, and they are token, real token, real assets like TLX, like ONT, ETH, you can, you can eat. And hyper speed. It's an example of the assets reuse within the platform. This track, you can, you can build your own track in the lab. And if others, they are using your tracks, you can authorize them and you will be rewarded with the token. And Marble Clans, you will, you will play on, uh, on, on Clayton soon. Uh, because it's one of the business partners we have and he used to, used to be on Facebook. And the Ground Hunter. Uh, this will be published with Neo, uh, with Global Community. And uh, this is a video recording. This is a real time game already, it's a VA. And, uh, you can trade and sell all the all the guns and components. And the crypto throwing is an example of how we help the existing game to cross chain. Because our layer two can realize the cross chain. Like you can use on ontology, on Neo, on Tron, and the upcoming will be Clayton and Divinity and IOSD, so most of the main public chains. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. That was great. Thank you, Mary. Um, okay, so we're just going to spend a little bit of time to have some fun with some trivia. Uh, there is an airdrop involved that's going to equal about 10,000 fab. I see a couple people in the audience that we had in our last uh, uh, presentation a couple weeks ago, so you guys, you guys are not allowed to raise your hands. <laughs>